What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I, Graham, Gius, and Matthews break down all the original content they watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the August 7th, 2023 edition of Raw Talk from last night, hosted by Megan Morant, Matt Camp, and the studio. They run down the biggest headlines from Monday's Raw, including replaying the LA Knight Miz back and forth on the mic, which was, I thought, one of the best parts of the entire show. Uh, great stuff there. We hear from LA Knight, yeah, of course, backstage here on the show. I mean, he's been all over the place lately between SmackDown Lowdown, he's appearing on Raw, for what reason, we don't fucking know, despite being a SmackDown superstar, whatever. He's at SummerSlam, he's on this show, he's at that show, he's hosting the fucking Mets game tonight. I mean, I'm glad he's all over the place, because he deserves it, and he's over, why not capitalize on that? Um, but LA Knight says that all Miz does is complain, and he, all that matters is that, you know, he was on the outside looking in, you know, coming into WWE, but all that matters is that he's here now, and he will indeed use Miz as a stepping stone, and also teases going for the World Championship, but doesn't say which one, whether it be the WWE Undisputed Universal title, or the World Heavyweight Championship. So, he is on SmackDown. He probably has to go for Reigns' belt. But that's the first time LA Knight has ever said anything about going for a top championship. He did, obviously, announce his intentions to become United States champion a couple of weeks ago in the Invitational that he lost. So, it's interesting. Maybe that is the long-term plan. I doubt it. I mean, I can't see him going to Raw to beat Rollins or whoever, and I doubt he's beating Roman Reigns or even facing Roman Reigns, but... Uh, you know, just something to think about. Matt Kim says that it makes sense for Knight to use and, you know, Miz as a stepping stone and target Miz because of how accomplished he is, and it just makes sense. Megan Morant is all on the LA Knight bandwagon. She's using his catchphrases, saying, yeah, I thought it was pretty great. Um, and he also says, Camp does, that Knight is just getting started and maintaining that momentum very well. Um, they recap the Fatal 4 won by Gable to become the number one contender to the Intercontinental Championship. They also recap uh, Ludwig Kaiser's win over Otis also from Raw. Kaiser interviewed on his own backstage. No Vinci, no Gunter. He says he demands gratitude coming off his latest victory. And he says that Gunter will destroy Chad Gable. And it's clear to the WWE Universe that Imperium will continue to run Raw. Matt Cam says that Gable will make adjustments coming off his loss to Gunter last week. And he thinks that he believed that he, he he believes that he can beat Gunter for that Intercontinental Championship. And he also talks Imperium's control of Raw, and they wonder and they question if he can suplex Gunter after not being able to do so on Raw last week. So that's kind of like the big hook here. And when he hits it, it'll be a big move, a la the double clothesline in AEW with Cole and MJF recently. Anyway, they recap the New Day's return against the Viking Raiders, a successful return of the ring for the uh, for the New Day. We hear from them backstage and. They just say a lot of nothing, but the New Day's interviews on these shows are always very entertaining. Kingston just says that it was time to come back. Woods says that the tag team division was in shambles without them. And they just kind of go back and forth for like a while. This, this interview was like probably four minutes, three, four minutes. It was a long interview by like Raw Talk standards and SmackDown Lowdown standards too. And Jackie was the one doing the interviewing and she asked if like the Budio cereal is still available and they ask her... They, they, I mean, they do. They talk about it. Like, oh, of course it's still available to FYE, blah, blah, blah. They're just kind of like busting her balls and shit. And then they walk off and they're like, we got to get going. We're Ashy. And then they ask Jackie what or what she thinks Ashy means, if she knows what Ashy means, what it is to be Ashy, I guess. And she answers and she actually knew what it was. And they were like proud of her for that. And they applaud. It was really funny. It was, it was fucking hysterical. So that was easily the best part of the show. And then to close it out, they just recap the main event. Rhodes, Rollins, and Nakamura beating the Judgment Day. Nakamura turning heel afterward, which Camp discussed. And they also hype up Roman Reigns' segment for SmackDown coming up on Friday, where J or rather Jimmy Uso will apparently acknowledge Roman Reigns, which I don't think he will. It's probably a swerve. We'll see. Um, but yeah, fine episode of Raw Talk. Uh, we heard from LA Knight in the fucking New Day, which was hysterical. And Kaiser, too, which was a nice change of pace. So a pretty good addition of Raw Talk here. Megan and Matt Camp already finding a groove and a chemistry that works for them, which is great to see already after a couple of shows host. And they really haven't hosted that many shows here on Raw Talk and SmackDown Lowdown. But they've already found a pretty good quality chemistry, which is nice. Uh, thank you guys for checking out my review of Raw Talk from August 7th, 2023. I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Have an awesome one, guys. I'm Graham G.S. and Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.